A breast augmentation or a breast enlargement is an operation to make the breasts bigger, put simply. Um, it's an operation carried out under a general anaesthetic with you fully asleep. Um, involves being in the hospital for the day, so you arrive and go home the same day. You'll be asleep for about an hour um, during surgery, but you will spend more time before and after um, your operation in the hospital. Um, you'll wake up having had a small incision under the breasts about three, four centimetres across made to form a pocket inside the breast, which can either be in front of the muscle or behind the muscle, or a combination of both, as I like to do with my split muscle technique. You will have the incision closed with dissolving stitches, dressing put over the top of that, and you'll typically wake up with a bra and a strap over the top to push the implants and the breasts down. A good candidate who's ready to have a breast augmentation is someone who's spent a bit of time thinking about it. You know, this should not be an impulse by a rushed decision, and typically my patients have already done that. You know, they are very well informed, they've done their research, they've looked people like me up on the internet and looked at websites um, for more information uh, to learn about the procedure, and they've really decided that this is something that is going to make them feel better. It's not just about having big breasts to compare with the next person along. It's not about trying to satisfy someone else. A typically good patient for a breast augmentation is doing it for themselves and is going to feel happy once they've had it done for themselves. And by that, what I mean is that by having larger breasts, they are gonna feel more confident in themselves. They're gonna be able to um, wear clothing that they feel better in, they're going to be able to look at themselves in the mirror and feel better about themselves. And all the other things that follow tend to be secondary. Um, but generally speaking, somebody who has thought it through and has decided that, you know what, by having my breast in enhanced, I'm just going to feel better in myself, in my own body, that's, that's the typical candidate who is a really good candidate for a breast augmentation and who I know is going to be happy after surgery. Someone who I think is not good for a breast augmentation is generally someone that I think is not doing it for the right reasons. If they're not doing it for themselves, if you get the feeling they're doing it for somebody else, to, to, to compete with friends, to perhaps you know please a partner or to try and revive a relationship or a career that may not be going the way that, that they want it to. Those are all absolutely the wrong reasons for doing this. Breast augmentation, like all operations, carries its own set of risks that you need to be aware of before you decide to undergo it. And any good hospital, any good surgeon, any good anaesthetist will be doing everything they can to minimise these risks, you know, both in terms of the hospital being well-managed, cleanliness, smoothly run, using high-quality staff, high-quality equipment, high-quality implants. From my point of view, what do I do to minimise these risks? Um, I'll do everything I can to ensure that you are fully prepared for surgery, that by the time you start your operation, you're at the optimal point of actually now being ready to have surgery and go through it as safely as possible. So what are these risks? Specific to breast augmentation surgery, there are the typical risks of pain, which actually is not really a risk, it's almost guaranteed. Expect some pain for the first few days, but it does get better. There's a risk of bleeding after surgery, about a one in a hundred chance that you may need to go back to the operating theatre. I think my numbers are probably better than that looking back over the last few years, but that's the number that I still quote and that's the typical number that you'll hear. There's about a one in a thousand risk of getting a bad infection. And this is important, if you get an infection in an implant, it may have to be removed in order to get rid of that infection, and then you may have to wait several months before you can have another one put back in again. Then there are the long-term risks with implants. They don't last forever. So do be prepared to have your implants changed in about 15 years time. This is not going to be your last operation. You may decide to have them removed or you may decide to have them replaced. And that's typically because of a condition called capsular contracture, which is hardening of the scar tissue around the implant. Um, capsular contracture is something that happens with all implants eventually. So you need to be prepared for it. And if it does become a problem, you need to be prepared to deal with it. It's where the scar tissue can squeeze the implant, start making things feel harder, feel more painful, potentially uncomfortable, and make things look unusual. And that might be what you end up coming back to have um, uh, dealt with in 15 or so years time when you'll need your implants exchanging. Um, if an implant gets a hole in it, 
what we call a rupture, a bit like a puncture in a tyre, which can happen again with time as they get older. That can go on to cause this hardening, this capsular contracture, and that might be something that brings you back to have implants changed. ALCL is a form of lymphoma, which is a bit like leukemia. It's, it's, um, it's a cancer that can be treated if it's caught early enough. Um, like everything else, it causes um, symptoms in the breast that you shouldn't um, ignore. Um, if, um, if you were to get a swelling, then you get it checked out like any other lump in the breast. And your surgeon or your doctor will send you to a breast clinic to have this investigated and uh, tests done to see whether or not you have um, uh, developed this very, very, very rare cancer. It is very, very, very rare. Breast cancer in this country carries a risk of one in eight. This cancer carries a risk of one in tens of thousands. Um, if you were to have um, an implant put in and if you were to be one of the un very unlikely, unlucky people to develop this, um, generally speaking, by having the implant removed and having the scar tissue around the implant removed, that's usually enough to cure you of this cancer. However, you know, you will be passed on to the right people to treat this if it were to happen. What I would say is that by coming to a place like the Cadogan and having surgery with somebody like myself and with the anaesthetic and nursing team and all the other adjuncts that we have here, those risks will be minimised um, to the best of our ability. Uh, fat transfer is a really exciting new tool that we now have that um, can add to a breast augmentation. I don't think it necessarily replaces breast implants altogether, but it can do in certain very select cases. But actually, in the main, it's really good for an adjunctive uh, procedure. So in addition to having implants put in, if there's a big gap between the breasts, it can be used to build up um, uh, that gap and give a better shaped breast. Uh, what is fat transfer to the breasts? Well, that's where basically we take uh, fat from another part of the body where you don't want it particularly uh, using liposuction. Um, but what we do is instead of discarding it, we process it in a way such that we're now left with the best fat cells and then inject those in small volumes bit by bit by bit very carefully to build up the area of the breast that we want to where we want to enhance the shape and the typical area is the cleavage area where if implants have been put in and they are sitting apart because of the natural shape of the breasts and the position of the breast being apart we can then enhance the cleavage area by adding a bit of fat into the middle to just give you a better um, inside cleavage decolletage area um, just to make the shape that much better. There's been a lot of talk of it replacing implants and this is the way forward. I really don't think that's going to happen. I think fat transfer when it's been done to replace implants has actually not worked very well because you need very large volumes of fat. So number one you need very large volumes of fat to give from other areas which quite often when we're with not very much breast tissue don't have. Number two, if you were to inject large volumes of, um, of fat into the breasts, it can cause problems. Survival of that fat is less. Problems because of what we call fat necrosis and lumps developing can be higher. So personally, I don't like doing fat transfer as a pure alternative to breast implants. I prefer doing it as an adjunct in addition to breast implants.